it's me again. Well, last time we were speaking about fake news. And as you remember, fake news is news that is fabricated, that is based on misinformation. Today in this unit, we're going to be talking about media framing, that is not fabricated news, but it is news that is presented in a way through a certain frame that makes us believe something is right or wrong. Okay, let's look at these two stories together. It's basically the same story. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but a very harmful hurricane struck New Orleans on August 29th in 2005, causing a lot of damage and over 1,000 deaths. Many people were trapped and couldn't uh, leave. And in the middle of this, they wanted to secure at least food for survival. News, pe news of people uh, in New Orleans was filling the news. Here are two stories. Let's look at them and try to decide what is the difference between these two pictures. What is the story being said? Look closely at the description of each picture and the choice of words. So the first picture, what do you see in this picture? And this is the second picture. Both are picture of people trapped in New Orleans, trying to find food and trying to secure their food. However, let's see how each picture was described. The first picture is described as two residents wage through chest deep water after finding bread at the grocery store. Okay, that's natural, what's wrong? Now, let's look at the description of the second, uh, the description of the second picture. A young man walks through chest deep flood water after looting a grocery store. What is the difference between the two stories? How are each, uh, are these two stories different or similar? If you look at the choice of words, first of all, in the first picture, they're described as two residents. They're described as two residents. Here you go. Two residents. Whereas, here, on the other picture, it's just a young man. A young man, it does not mean that this is a resident, this young man could be anybody, could be an invader, could be an outsider. Again, the description goes on to say that these two residents in the first picture were going through the water after finding, after finding bread and at a grocery store. So they found bread at a grocery store, whereas this other young man that was also going through the water in the deep flood, but he found looting, looting a grocery store. What is the difference between looting and finding? Well, looting is basically stealing and finding is a good word. It doesn't mean stealing. Again, what's the difference? between residents and just a young man. Of course, if we look closely at the pictures, we will find that. In the first, in the first picture, we have two, a couple that are both white adults. And because of the bias of the writer, the writer describes those people as victims when you read the story around these two people, 
you sympathize with them, you feel that, uh, you pity them, you like them. However, on the other hand, the, the other picture, which has a picture of a black boy, it gives us the sense, the description gives us the sense that he's a villain. He's not a, a young boy that found food, that was trying to survive, but he's a thief. He went and stole and stole the food. But do we know that the white couple has paid for the bread that they found? Or do you think they really have paid for it? And how do we know that this young boy has actually stolen the food? But what do we feel if we read things like descriptions like that? We feel that these are good people and this is an evil boy. And why do we feel this way? We feel this way because of the way the story was framed, the way the story was told. The two stories are true. That is, people were actually trapped and people were finding were trying to find food. However, the way each story is presented, it's presented differently because each uses a different frame. So what is media framing? Media framing can simply be described as the angle or perspective from which a new story is told. While news is often thought to be objective and value free, this is rarely ever the case. News is not an exact representation of reality, but rather a reconstruction from various angles of a small section of reality. This is not to say journalists necessarily lie or consciously distort the truth, but that journalists, by covering particular stories, using particular sources from a particular news angle, are constructing reality through a selective process. So if we go back to the pictures that we have just seen, we will see how the same situation is described from two different points of view, from two using two different frames. Whereas the first picture frames them as victims, the second picture frames, frames the boy as a thief. Media framing is based on, uh, on a theory called media framing theory, which is the selection of news by journalists. There is, a, there is always, there is reality. However, this reality is taken up by media and it is formulated in a way that suits the media's agenda. And that is how the, it is presented for public perception that is going to be the public perception of reality that is media looks takes the a real situation and frames it in a way and presents it to the media to the people to the public and the public are then influenced by this perspective and this becomes reality so what influences frames? How are frames? Why do people make frames? Various issues can influence how frames are created. One overarching ideologies in societies, or what is often considered common sense, that is what we see as natural, is the frame. Two issues such as the race, class and gender of a journalist, editors, owners and audiences, can influence the framing. That is their own biases. Number three, finally, the production of news or how news is constructed is of importance. Newsmakers often depend on institutional sources such as police, courts, and politicians to supply stories which can both influence agenda and how a story is defined. What kind of frames exist? There are two main frames. One is the natural frameworks, which identify events as physical occurrences, taking natural and not attributing any social forces to the causation of events. 
That is, when we saw the boy as a thief, it is just natural. It's presented in a frame that because he's a black boy, then he must be a thief. The second is social frameworks. And social frameworks use events as socially driven occurrences due to the notions, goals, and manipulations on the part of, of other social players. Social frameworks are built on the natural frameworks. That is, the, what the society believes, what are the norms and values of the society, how society views things, and so whatever story is framed in a way to adhere to the society's norms. So if I want to show somebody as a villain, I will, I will describe them as a thief. If I, want, if I want my audience to actually sympathize with the people, I, uh, I will describe them as victims. And thus, the framing works making use of our social norms and social values. Let's look at those proverbs together and decide what framing are they based on? Are they based on social or are they based on uh, natural framing? في الامتحان يكرم المرء أو يهان أو يهان على فكرة مش يهان أو يهان. So is this natural or social? Of course it's social. What about? ياخد الارد على ماله يروح المال ويقعد الارد على حاله This is based on natural framing الوحدة خير من جليس السوء This is based on social framing امشي في جنازة ولا تمشي في جوازة Actually this is based on both social which is الجنازة and natural, which is death. This is obvious, of course, based on natural. Again, it's based on natural. Again, based on natural. So, these uh, natural framings are used to, co to tell us something, to convey a message and or to frame a story in a way that, would, that will either make it appealing to us or make us angry at it or dislike it. So, what do journalists use actually to create their frames? Number one, metaphor. To frame a conceptual idea through comparison to something else. Like, if we say that uh, it's basically a comparison between a person, a human, and a monkey. So, it, it frames this conceptual idea through comparison between two things. Between the human as a beautiful creature and the monkey as an ugly creature. Another framing technique is stories. They may be myth or legends. To frame a topic via a narrative in a vivid and memorable way. They, they could create stories and create and base these stories on our own legends and myth that we believe in. And it, it creates a vivid narrative that is that touches our emotions number three tradition rituals and ceremonies cultural mores that imbued significance in the mundane closely tied to artifacts these are things like when we like imshi figaneza imshi figaneza is a ritual that we all do so we talk about rituals and our traditions so they bring stories that are framed or based on our tradition, traditions and rituals and ceremonies. Number four, slogans, jargons and catchphrases. 
That is to frame an object with a catchy phrase to make it more memorable and re uh, relatable, something that we can relate to, something that we like. An example of uh, framing can be very clear if we look at, for example, how journalists sometimes frame drug issues. One, the law and order frame. That is, they make use of law and order to frame the whole issue of drugs through this perspective. Here, the key issue is that drug addicts or junkies are criminals, putting our communities and children at risk. Drug pushers must be stopped and petty crime or even crime waves are caused by junkies feeding their habit. Moreover, addicts shooting up on the streets is unsightly, immoral and bad for tourism. Local politicians or the Minister of Justice may be questioned on why something isn't done. Victims of crime may be interviewed or businesses who are in areas frequented by addicts. Likewise, police may be questioned on what they are doing to curb the criminal activities. So in order to frame it in a way that is looking at order, law and order. The second kind of framing is drug misuse as a health issue. Here the key framing is the health of the drug user and issues of health in wider society. Here a health minister might be interviewed to discuss funding for treatment centers Various health professionals or experts may be interviewed on issues such as treatment or uh, controversies about types of treatment. Third, drug misuse is a social problem. Here, drug misuse may be framed as a social issue connected with class, race and dysfunctional society. Here, the question of which area are most affected by drug use and associated crime, crimes might be discussed alongside issues such as unemployment and social deprivation. Four, recreational drugs should be legal. In this less, less common frame, recreational drugs are seen as a normal part of society and issues such as addiction and social problems are downplayed or compared with already legal drugs such as alcohol or cigarettes. The cost of the war and drugs and the issue of the criminalization of dealers are often an issue here and policies of harm reduction may be emphasized. So as you can see, although in the four cases we're talking about drugs and the use of drugs, each frame looks at it from a very different perspective and each frame considers different aspects and different angles of the issue. So, whereas in the first frame we saw that it is focused on the law and order. And thus, when they conduct interviews, they would conduct interviews with police, with, with Minister of Justice, and so on. However, another way of looking at the drug issue would be looking at it from a health issue. And in that way, uh, they will be talking about the consequences of drugs, how it's bad, and how can we treat people. And then it becomes the health minister that's responsible for that. The third perspective, as, you, as we have just seen, is the social, is looking at it from a social perspective. How, why? Looking at the reasons why there are people uh, using drugs, how, what happened, what are the reasons for that, how can we treat the social causes that cause drug abuse. And finally, there is of course those who support the use of drugs and they can frame it as, you know, let people have drugs, it is okay if they have drugs. It is not that we can, we agree or disagree with any of the framings, but it is just an example to show you how the same issue can be discussed from a lot of different perspectives. 
None of them are wrong, but one of them, but each of them focuses on a different aspect, on an aspect that they want us to believe and that they want us to focus on. The way framing is done is they would use artifacts, that is, objects with intrinsic symbol, symbolic value, a visual culture phenomena that holds more meaning than the object itself. They would use pictures that make you make the topic they're talking about or the issue they're talking about appealing or uh, unappealing. Another technique is contrast, is to describe an object in terms of what it is not. The third technique that is used is spin, and that is to present a concept in such a way as to convey a value judgment, positive or negative, that might not be immediately apparent to create an inherent bias by definition, to make us like something or not like something, like the very first pictures that we have seen today, the pictures of the boy and the girl, uh, the boy and, and, the, and the couple. But how do we construct frames? To be able to actually tell what frame is being used and to be able to actually deconstruct these frames, we need to look at or try to answer the following question. One, what assumption, assumptions are in the article? Frames often have an overarching assumption or assumptions. In your book, there is an article about hoodies and about the use, uh, youth that go to malls wearing hoodies. But each article has a different assumption. So what is the assumption? Who are the sources? Who are the main sources or primary definers that set the tone and agenda of the report? That is, who, who do I interview? Which sources do I go back to? What is the evidence that the writer is using to provide, uh, uh, to support his or her argument. And third and very importantly, is what kind of language is used or adjectives or nouns. For example, in a recent uh, writer's report on Israel and Palestine, it was stated that Israelis were brutally murdered while Palestinians were killed. So. What's the difference between brutally murdered and killed? The, the end result is the same. Both have been killed, but brutally murdered makes, makes the Palestinians seem as vicious and as people that, are, that go out and brutally murder Israelis, whereas the Palestinians are presented as killed. That is, as if they're just killed. They could have been killed in a car accident taking away the brutality that the Israelis actually practice on Palestinians. Likewise, Palestinian attacks on military targets are usually termed terrorist attacks, while Israeli attacks on civilian targets are not. So if an Israeli, if a, if a Palestinian attacks uh, an, an Israeli defending their land, uh, and a Palestinian defending their land attacks an Israeli, it's described as a terrorist act. But if an Israeli drives citizen, Palestinian citizens out of Al-Aqsa Mosque, then it is not ever described as an act of terrorism. Finally, can any patterns or themes be found? For example, in the coverage of Israeli Palestine, there is a pattern of language used to describe the sites. There is a pattern that, for, that they always describe them as some, a group or are described as victims and the other is described as villains. Like the, the two pictures we saw at the very beginning, the white people are described as victims, victims of nature that is, and the black boy is described as a villain. So, and now to go on, how are people or groups represented? A common device is the alienation of social groups, of minorities such as travelers, other ethnic minorities, refugees or migrants. 
That is, we see a news report that, for example, talks about the effect of a hurricane or the effect, even the effect of coronavirus. But many times we don't see, for example, the effect of the coronavirus on women specifically or on refugees. How are refugees coping with the coronavirus? We, we don't see that in the news at all, but we just see, we talk about the population, meaning the regular people, the people that are all in mainstream. And as I was just saying, gender representation is very important. For example, the clothing of a female politician is more likely to be commented on in reports as compared to male. We never see any uh, comments about presidents uh, or ministers that are male or politicians that are male, but we could see comments on female politicians, for example. Or again, if we're talking about uh, gender representation in the coronavirus, for example, research has shown us that the violence against women has increased because of the lockdown, but we never hear about that in the news. And finally, it is, it is also important that frames can also be symbolic. Remember, we said that metaphors is one of the ways that framings are created. So frames can also be symbolic in nature that is based upon symbols in words or pictures. Thank you very much. And next time we'll talk more about how to deconstruct frames.